How's it going guys? In today's video, I'm going to be attempting to retrofit a B58 TU pump on my N55. This is my N55. It's an electronic wastegate. It's a 2015. And one of the main weaknesses of the N55 is the high pressure fuel pump. So I'm going to be retrofitting one, a TU pump in here. We're going to have to cut it and make it fit. Um, there's not a lot of information on this on the internet, so I'm gonna make this video to help anyone out out there. Um, I'm also gonna be updating you guys on the reliability. Is there any like long-term, you know, side effects or anything like that? I've heard pretty good things about it, um, but uh, you know, we're about to find out. So this is my B58, and this one actually has a TU pump. If you saw my other video. I put a TU pump on this, as you can see right there. That's the super pump. It's the HCP6 or something. So I'm actually going to be taking it off this car and putting it on that one. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, why would you do that? And honestly, it's because I don't drive this car that much. And I already ordered another one, but I'm kind of impatient. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to do that today. It's really easy to get this one on and off either way. All you got to do is remove the cowls and it comes right out. Um, so we're going to be dealing with that. I already got this disassemble over here. If you don't know how to remove your intake manifold, I'm going to make another video on how to clean your intake valves. So you guys can just watch that. I'll demonstrate how to remove the intake manifold. But this is kind of how you want your engine for you to do your pump. As you can see, everything is disconnected. I got the fuel pressure relieved. There's our pump. I got the booster line disconnected. So I'm going to be pulling this off and then taking it off this one and then we'll get back at it. All right, so we got the TU pump out. And so this has been debated, you know, whether, you know, the TU pump damages the Gen 1 B58 camshaft. So here I have the cam follower, as you can see, and there is like no wear on it. So then if you look at the camshaft, it also looks really good. There's no scoring or no scratching or anything. And I have been running this fuel pump for quite some time, almost 10,000 miles. So it won't damage your engine. At least it didn't damage mine. So it's pretty safe to use the TU pump on your B58. Now we got to figure that out about the N55, which is what we're doing today. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to put this back together and then we're going to go. I'm going to show you guys how the pump looks on it. So I already got the pump in, but I mean, obviously you can see it doesn't fit. I need to cut that flange right there and maybe a little bit over there to get the bolt to line up. So once we make it fit, I'm gonna show you guys how I cut it. All right, so here I have the old N55 high pressure fuel pump and we're gonna be comparing them, see how different they look. So if you look at the plunger, the TU pump is actually slightly bigger in diameter but um, this is this is the N55 pump, the, the OEM one, and this is the same size as the B58 Gen 1. So if you can retrofit this one onto a B58, uh, you should be able to put it on this one and it shouldn't cause any issues because this is the same diameter as the B58 Gen 1 pump. And also it fits onto the plunger like just perfect. This is a N55 plunger and it's just perfect. So everything looks good. Uh, we're gonna start cutting it up. It looks like we're going to have to make a cut. This is how the pump would go in there. So we would have to cut like a piece off right here so that we can kind of spin this and get this to line up to here. And then once we get that situated, we can uh, figure out where we're gonna make the hole for the bolt over here. So I'm gonna cut this and then I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. All right, guys. So I was able to cut the pump. As you can see, I just made a cut like this. That's all I've done so far. And as you can see, all the fittings are connected. The only thing is it's not, the fuel lines are not gonna bolt up, you know, like you think they are, it's gonna be a little difficult. So this one wasn't connecting to the pump. What I had to do is remove it from the back here. As you can see, I disconnected it from where it's attached to the block. And this gives me more slack and now I can attach it. So afterwards, I'm going to see if I can, if I'm going to be able to re-thread that back in. I think I will, but all it is, is a little support. It's not that big of a deal. 
and then up here um this is not gonna just go in when because the pump is a little taller so what i did was i removed these two bolts and this gives me slack to go up a little bit and i threaded it in and then if i push down on it a little bit i can get the bolt back in and that should do it it's that easy like i said all i've done so far is make that little cut right there just to clear the brake booster line um and it's this is how it's gonna sit uh you're gonna want to rotate this connector like over here so that your plug fits oh, is it gonna reach okay yeah it barely reaches so <laughs> thankfully if not you can always unclip it um so if you don't have a 2015 and up uh n55 you are gonna have to change this but since mine is a 2015 um mine just fits into the connector i don't need to replace no connectors or anything uh just check you know your you can see your connector from the top of the you know when you're just take off your engine cover you should be able to peek through the top to the through your uh intake manifold and you should be able to see your connector if you have the right one it's gonna look like this if you don't you're just gonna have to order it and then splice it in other than that it's looking pretty good i'm just gonna mark here where i'm gonna cut for the bolts to bolt it in it's just gonna be one here and then i'm just gonna have to trim off a little bit there as you can see it barely clears i'm just gonna have to make like a little triangle there so the bolt goes in i was able to get that one bolt in that one's secure I just need to cut a little bit more on this side and then we should be able to get the bolt in and we just rotate this connector plug this in tighten everything up she's gonna be all done so just one more just have to shave that down a little bit i'm using a this dremel right here and an angle grinder that's over there with a big blade or a big wheel um you need a combination of both so just you know have all the tools you can on hand it really helps out a lot and makes it easier so i trimmed that one and that one and as you can see both of them are lined up so it's just about done i just gotta remove it and reinstall the plunger i took it out just so i can actually see the pump all the way in you know so i can make measurements and stuff so we're gonna remove it i'm gonna trim just a little bit this way you know, so the bolt sits more straight because it has a little bit of tension. Um, and it's basically done. We're gonna rotate this connector and I'll show you guys once it's done. Basically the pump is done. It's, it looks like I did it and it's good. Um, one thing you do wanna make sure is just make sure that it's flat when you're done. You know, when you're done tightening it and you get it all uh, done and you're finished for the final time, you wanna make sure that it's flat. So you wanna make sure that this is making contact with the vacuum pump and same on the other side it has to be flat make sure it's flat all around if it's not you're gonna have issues so make sure it's flat and make sure that it's seating all the way in and make sure you don't have tension like i do here as you can see it's a little crooked so we just have to cut a little bit this way and then it should clear one last thing you want to do is before you put the uh pump in there get your uh cam follower and you know just put a little bit of oil in here that's what i'm gonna do um, you should do that every time you remove a pump. Um, and, you know, just make sure it goes in evenly. And other than that, it should be all good. All right, so here's the finished product. I cleaned up a little of the edges. I cleaned them up a little bit, cut a little bit deeper into the pump so the bolt wouldn't have tension. And I also cleaned up the edges a little bit, make it look a little cleaner. So this is complete. It fits on the car. We're all good. One thing I did want to mention, though, is the B50 ATU pump doesn't come with this O-ring here but it does have like a little groove. So what I did is my stock N55 pump did have a little O-ring around it. So I just put it on this one. Um, it fits the same way and I don't see why not. I just don't want it to leak. So I just wanted to note that. Uh, I would probably just swap it over. And yeah, so I'm gonna put this on the car. I'm gonna put the intake manifold. I'm not gonna show you guys all of that. That's pretty boring. So I'm just gonna put this on and then we're gonna flash it on MHD for E40. We're gonna go fill up and then we're gonna get some reactions. And this is an awesome pump, so I would definitely recommend it. One last thing I wanted to address is when you install your pump, you want to make sure, well, when you're going to cut it and you're making measurements and stuff, you want to make sure that your connector is on the left side or on the right side. So it's on the side of your alternator. You don't want it to be like this. And then you cut wrong, you know, because the flow of the pump, it's in through here and out through here. So I just wanted to make sure that no one gets confused and 
ruins an expensive pump because you know these are pretty expensive nothing compared to like the xdi or anything like that those are actually really expensive which is why i'm doing this this is really cost effective these are like 400 bucks um it's really hard to screw up as you can see um just take it slow like i said the first thing i would do is cut this off like this and then um get a marker and just start you know marking it little by little trim it and trim it Take your time, you don't want to rush it, you don't want to cut too much. You know, where it's not going to seat the pump, because this has to be firm on the vacuum pump. So, just wanted to address that. And like I said, I'm making this video because I haven't seen a single video on YouTube that shows you how to fit a TU pump. There's like two, I think, that show you how to fit a Gen 1 B58, but they're not even showing you, you know, all, all these stuff. So it was really hard for me to figure it out, so I'm just making this video to help someone out know that it is possible and it's you know hopefully it goes all good you know we still have to put it together but i'm crossing my fingers that it's gonna be just fine <laughs> so now it's all completed it's connected i just uh, ended up removing this clip that secures it over there just to give me enough slack and that's just about right make sure your cable is snug when i was uh when i removed this to reposition it the connector went flying and I thought it fell into my charge pipe, but it was actually just by the steering rack. So thankfully it's under my charge pipe and I found it. Um, it's complete. We're just going to put the intake manifold back on and start it. All right, guys. So she's all put back together. As you can see, all it needs is the engine cover, which I don't really use for heat purposes. But, uh... It's all put together. So we're gonna start it. It's gonna crank for like 15 seconds before it starts, which is normal. So let's give it a try. Look at that, she's on. Let's make sure we have no leaks. Make sure no weird. All right, I got cut off on my car. I connected to the Bluetooth. But we're just gonna make sure there's no leaks. Don't see anything. And there you can see the TU pump installed. It's looking pretty good to me, so we're gonna close the hood, clean up a little bit here, take it for a spin, make sure we have, we're gonna lock some data, make sure we, you know, we have good old, uh, gas pressure, fuel pressure, I mean. Let's give it a rev. No check engine lights. You shouldn't even have to tune it or anything. It, if on MHD, it should be OEM. You shouldn't have to change anything. Damn. Well, the, fuel, the door response feels a lot quicker. I don't know if it's just my imagination or if it's true, but... All right, we're going to clean up, and uh, I'll catch you guys in a bit. All right, guys. So now here at the gas station, we're going to flash E40. And we're going to flash actually a different map. So instead of stage 2+, plus, we're going to go stage 2 high-pressure fuel pump. So we're going to select E40. And then let's make sure our options are still all the same. And so for your high pressure fuel pump selection, it's still going to be OEM TU1. These are only if you get like an aftermarket one. But for the all the BMW pumps are always going to be OEM no matter what pump it is on what car. So we're going to go ahead and flash it and fill it up. And I'm gonna give you guys some runs. So far, the high pressure, or I mean the, the fuel pressure, it's really good. It's consistent. The throttle response feels definitely faster. Um, it feels even a little faster just with that pump, even without a tune. All right, so we're flashed, it's all done. And one of the advantages of running ethanol with these gas prices, look at that, huge money savings. So now here at the gas station, I'm gonna double check there's no leaks. And we're gonna make sure that it starts right up and there's no like, you know, delay in it. Starts right up, let's make sure there's no leaks. Alright. Alright, so there's no leaks, as you can see. So everything's looking good. And we're gonna go take it on the test drive. I'll give you some clips. 
All right, so I know I said I was gonna give you guys some clips last night, but it's actually the next day. And I actually got to drive it quite a bit. I think I put like over a hundred miles. So we're gonna start it with my old pump. Um, it was actually starting to fail. So in the morning when I would try to start it, it would be like a slight delay of like five seconds before it would start. You know, that's just a symptom that your fuel pump's going out. So now with the new pump, we're gonna see if there's any delay of any sort. As you can see, that's way better. It starts right up. That's normal. Like I said, the M55s have really weak fuel pumps. They really don't, you know, push much power and they like to fail. This was only running E20 before this. And E20 is not that much for a BMW. So we're gonna let it warm up and now we're actually gonna do some logs and we're gonna do some pulls. It definitely got a lot faster. I think it got like almost 80 horsepower more just off that map. And I have my own custom map that I'm gonna tune. We should push it a little more. All right guys, so now here in the car, I'm gonna give it a quick pull. As you can see, my gauges were kind of maxed out. So before I used to be like at 420 torque, and now it's like at like 530, like 450 horsepower, 460 horsepower. So that fuel pump definitely made a huge increase in power. Throttle response, uh, the car has a lot more mid-range. So it's really like the best bang for your buck, you know, 400, 500 bucks, a little modification and you get it to fit versus, you know, an XDI or a spool, you're saving hella money. So I would definitely give it a shot. All right, guys, so now I'm vlogging some information and my fuel pressure looks awesome. Everything looks good. The fuel pressure is consistent. Uh, the, well, I wanted to say the Supra has a way higher pressure. You know, the Supra, the B58 to you runs at a higher pressure than like a lot of normal engines so that one was like 5,000 psi so like an m55 regularly runs around 3,000 psi on the stock fuel system and this pump you know pushes over 5,000 so that is a whole a lot more pressure you know thankfully the injectors in the m55 are in a lot of engines like high performance you know like the s55 i think even like the n63 or the s63 uh regardless you know they can take the pressure so you're not going to damage your injectors or anything an M3 can go over like six, seven hundred on the stock injectors with port injection at that point. So no, no worries there. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to drop a follow or a like. Um, I know this car is half wrapped. You know, I'm currently in the process of that. Hopefully by the next video I make, it's going to be finished. I'm going to make a video on how to clean your intake valves and also your rod bearings at some point. I'm going to do them just as preventative maintenance on this car since it is an M55 and they do have oil servicing issues. But that's going to be in another video. So like I said, if you found this helpful, please feel free to drop a follow or a like. And I'll see you next time. Best sounding engine for sure.